In an interview with filmmaker, you said that you hate chaos and filmmaking is chaotic. And yeah. and that really kind of hit me too. I'm, I'm a bit of a minimalist, like in the way I like to decorate my spaces and just kind of keep things orderly and clean. And yes, filmmaking is certainly chaotic, especially at the level that you guys are working at. Um, how do you avoid that chaos on your projects? I try to communicate as many. I, I, I try to have a, you know, a, a, a game plan and a, a, an approach. It's like, um, I guess, you know, in sports, like you I always uh, I remember this term like a, a coach will have his first you know fifteen to twenty plays mapped out. I do the same thing. I mean, I try to have everything kind of mapped out, and then I sort of react from a creative standpoint. But if I can get marching orders to keep things efficient going forward, you know, I'm big on momentum. And uh, the more prepared I am, the more creative we can get. And director and I can move the camera around and try to find the best angles, and not get too tied into anything. Um, that comes from a lot of prep and homework for my part and then communication from me to my crew. And, uh, I'm, you know, I minimize the chaos. Hmm. I just minimize the chaos so that the environment around me is creative, not chaotic. So when I say I hate chaos, it's, I hate the chaos of struggling through something and having to move a, a 300 person crew because, uh, we didn't give them the right information and everything's in the shot. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Yeah, yeah, I try to communicate that from from my gaffer to my first AC to the transportation captain. I, you know, I'm talking to everybody. It's like this is where we're gonna look. Let's not put anything there. And if if they're if their truck's dropping something off, let me know. It's just dropping something off because I'm gonna freak out if it's in the shot. Yeah, you know. Yeah. And I, I just I, I I don't like um making a whole company scramble. Like I like a whole company moving in. Um, and synchronicity, not that it's always, I guess synchronicity is a strong word because it's never really that. <laughs> yeah. It's more that people understand what the, like the first 10 plays are in a day. Yeah. So like how lengthy is your pre-production process, you know, normally, or maybe there isn't a normal, but are you the type that will, you know, almost demand more pre-production because this is your process and it's ultimately better in the long run? I, you know, I uh, do the same. I have basically have a very similar process. No matter if I get three weeks, five weeks, eight weeks, fourteen weeks, there's the things I have to do. Sure. I actually hate long prep, to be quite honest with you, because it it keeps me away from rolling. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I like the shoot. And it's the one thing I really, really love is like, uh, creating images, rolling on them, discovering stuff, and you know, and using whatever uh, skill set I've developed over the years to help a filmmaker make his film or her film. But, um, but you know, so it's really just once I understand the screenplay, so my process is really about, under, first of all, if it's a new director, I need to understand who this person is. You know, if I, it's somebody I've worked with before, then it's about, um, it's a lot easier because that process doesn't exist anymore. It's really about defining what the film's going to be. And once I understand that through, whether it's through references, through other crew, um, through some of the other collaborators, then it's about me breaking it down and communicating it, all that information to the crew in, in, in an effort to sort of uh, minimize chaos and, and create, an, again, to create an environment like uh, uh, that is free to create. You know, um, I do that work whether I have three weeks or I have uh, 10. I, I just, it has to be done. I have to break it down in my head. And if I don't have enough time to do it, then maybe that simplifies what I'm trying to attempt. You Does know? that level of detail and organization in your mind, does that it, it, how how do you how do you blend that with natural improvisation that just is going to happen on set, or even just time to let scenes kind of breathe and change as you go? Do you ever struggle with that? I used to a lot, a lot before, you know. Um, but the one thing going in is a cinematographer. Where sometimes you have something in your mind, and like maybe, uh, and this is filmmaking general because there's so many people involved. If a director stands in front of a room of 12, when people walk out of that room, 12 people are going to have 12 different interpretations about what that person said. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and uh, uh, it's really about coming together, about trying, trying to define it as one single vision. And, and that's something to be conscious of, really. Um, so that level of organization for me is so I understand everything I possibly can. I don't expect to know the film better than the director and I don't know, I expect to know the words better than the writer. And I don't expect to know the character better than the actor, but 
I want to understand uh, the film better than everybody else. <laughs> you know, so I'm there to answer the questions. You know, the AD and I, uh, the first AD and I, are, I collaborate with the first AD at all times because it's like my understanding creatively of the film and his understanding uh, of his or her understanding of the film when it comes to uh, its organizational aspects and some of the things we have to you know fight against, whether it be time or schedule. Um, so for me, I, I I take all that into account. I mean, it sounds boring, but that's like that's the heavy lifting you do. Uh, it, it, all that work, all that preparation, it's like building the frame of your house and the foundation. As long as the foundation and the frame are strong, you could have an open plan. You could cut it up into rooms. I don't care. But you know, creatively, I'm like I'm ready for you. Like if you decide that uh, if you decide the night before that you want to flip the other way, yeah, we got you. You know, and that's what I like to prepare for. Yeah. I guess I'm preparing for anything. <laughs> well, that's good. I think, yeah, over preparation, I think, to me personally, I think preparing to that level just allows for more space on set to make changes. I don't know. I just feel like the more prepared I am, the better I'll be if things change, which sort of sounds like yeah. you're, you're in the same kind of mindset with things like that. Yeah, but you want to be you want to be feel comfortable. The thing that uh, when something gets put off, like I've noticed over the years, like if somebody... If, if somebody gets irritated about a change, it's because they weren't prepared for the change. Yeah. You know, but um, but being creative and um, look, shooting shouldn't just be about execution. Shooting the film um, should give you the capacity to be able to actually improvise. You look, I you know what? When I hear stories about, um, you know, directors who storyboard everything and everything is exact. I'm like I, I call bullshit on that, man. I mean. Tell me you didn't want to pan left a little bit, you know, or you want, you know, pan right or maybe delay the move. I mean, come on. You know, uh, I've seen previous before. It doesn't doesn't sing like a real camera in a real space. So I think you still need to have some element of improvisation and the ability to read the room and see the actors and be inspired. Or else I think it's, you know, you're going to end up with a very cold product. 